What is up guys, my name is Exodon and welcome back to another guide. In this guide I will be talking about biohacking and how biohacking actually works. So let's just jump right into it. So biohacking. One of the most important things in this game and everything kinda evolves around it. And biohacking is for heroes. Once your hero reaches level 25, a biohacking will be available to you. And uh, once you hear this 25, you will have this icon that looks like a little flower and it is grey. Each hero has a command capability and that command capability determines how many energy splinters you are going to need to actually biohack your hero. So for an example, I'm taking Tonya here, I need 200 energy splinters to biohack Tonya. The higher the command capability, the more it requires to actually biohack the hero. For an example here we have Enlil, this requires 300 to biohack and level 8 will require you 350 to biohack. And the 8 command capability is also the highest command capability you can have. Uh, when you biohack a hero, it will give you two things. It will give you more troops per 5 levels and it will also give you a biohack ability. I'm starting off with the troops. The higher the command capability level is, the more troops you are going to get by biohacking. And I'm taking a writer here for an example. And if we look closely, closely to troop capacity, you will see that every five levels, Vito is going to increase its troop capacity by 350. And now if I take for an example a low command capability hero such as Smith over here we can see that the uh, troop, uh, troop capacity is going to be way lower because it's a 3 command capability hero. Moving back to Vito. I'm going to talk about fusion skills now and uh, every single hero has fusion skill and it's the basic skill you have here once you have all your activation requirements activated. Now, when you biohack a hero, you will get a secondary ability, that is your biohack ability, such as you can see here, down here, for Vito. Vito, the biohack ability, is increasing all damage caused by all supporting weapons by 10%, like you can see right down there. And each of those that have been biohacked also will have that. If I take a Pereira here for an example, which is not biohacked for me, you can see the biohack skill being grey, meaning it is not activated and you can't actually use it. Another thing about biohacking is that if you want to quickly see which heroes you have biohacked, you can just jump right into your base station and go to your heroes tab. Each single hero that has a yellow flower on, on top of the uh, right corner means that they are biohacked. Heroes that don't have it means they are not biohacked. Okay, so we are done about biohacking now, and that's basically the real nice concept behind it, how it actually works. And now from now on on the next screen, I'm going to give you an example what type of heroes you should actually biohack. <laughs> guys this was a really short video today but i felt a need to tell you guys how actually biohacking works because when i started the game personally i think it was like in until late season one when i realized that biohacking is actually a thing and it's definitely worth doing it and by that time i was so sad i've spent some of most of my energy splinters on actually just uh, premium drop pods you should do that only in the beginning though premium drop pods are really good but at the same time you still need to buy hack your heroes and you can also buy hack epic heroes to actually get better stats and to do better behemoths but yeah that was pretty much it on biohacking thank you so much for watching please do check out my other content and there are several things going on on the official entropy discord 
such as some giveaways on coins and some new uh, some new gift codes so definitely go check those out and yeah subscribe leave a like turn your notification bell on and we'll see you on the next video bye